This effect is probably in the top five most common animations inside creative websites. It's a small detail, but it definitely makes the difference between a dull, regular website and a creative one. What's good about it is it's not super complicated. I'll see how we can make this using React and with either Firm Emotion or GSA. I'll start by creating the layout, and then I'll go over the general concept of how we can make a parallax animation using these two libraries, and then I'll jump into the code. And as always, there's the source code and the live demo in the description below. All right, so this is the starting project. I basically have two components inside of a Next.js application. I have my first component here and my second component here. They are basically copy pasted. And inside of the page JS, it looks like this. I have a smooth scroll defined here, and then I have two components. Now I've decided to skip the part where I'm doing the layout because I think the value is inside of the animations, but let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me do the layout, I'll just adjust the videos. So yeah, let's take a quick look just to understand what's happening here. I have my titles here, parallax scroll, and then I have here the word, which is split, and then I'm returning a span for every single letter. So this is actually separated. You're gonna see that all of my letters here are actually separated, and that's what this piece of code is. And then I have my images, I have an image container, and then inside of it, I have three images. Those images are basically statically imported here, put inside of an array, and then I map that array and I return an image container and a next image inside of it. And that looks basically like this. So that's for the starting project. And now I can jump inside of the animation. Let's start with GSAP. How can we make a parallax animation with GSAP? It's actually quite simple. All we have to do is define a scroll trigger. All right, scroll trigger is a plugin that's available in the GSAP library. And inside of it, we can define a bunch of properties, but we only need to define four for now. The first three ones here are pretty simple. The trigger is what we want to track inside of the window. The start is the starting point of the tracking and the end is the end point of the tracking. And then the scrub is the important part. We want to specify scrub true because that way, all of the animations that we're gonna define inside the timeline here are gonna be directly linked to the scroll bar. And that's basically how we can create a parallax based on the scroll. And now why do I use a timeline here? There's a specific reason why I put the scroll trigger inside of the timeline. And it's that way I can have in a pretty clear way, I can add a bunch of animations to the timeline and all of those animations will be linked to the same scroll trigger. And there's another important point here that we need to do is add a zero here. Since it's a timeline, normally a timeline is over time. It's one animation after the other, but in this case, for example, in my case here, I'm animating a bunch of elements at the same time. And so I'm doing zero here, which means all of these animations will happen at the same time. And yeah, that's basically it for GSAP. I'm gonna go in the code and see how we can do this. So like I said, the first thing I wanna do here is use a timeline and inside of it, I'm gonna have a scroll trigger. So to do that in React, the first thing I'm gonna do is create a layout effect. And I'm gonna open that hook and have empty parameters here. So it runs once when the component mounts. Now, why am I using a use layout effect instead of a simple use effect? The reason is all the code that's gonna be inside of this will be triggered or, or will run before the DOM content, which is this here, is created. And that way it's gonna avoid creating flashes because since GSAP is imperative, we need to add a bunch of refs into our elements and then we're gonna add our animations on top of them. And that can create some bugs and some flashes so it's best to use a use layout effect to be sure that all of the animations are added before the DOM content is painted. And once I have my layout effect, I can create a context that's gonna be equal to the gsap.context. And here it's gonna be a function. And now why am I creating a context? It's to basically declare all of my animations inside of it. And when the component unmounts, it's gonna trigger its return function. And that return function will basically call the context.revert function. And so here, I'm gonna declare all of my animations when the component mounts and when it unmounts, I'm gonna revert all of those animations. So we do this to make sure we don't have any weird bugs when unmounting the component and then returning to it. We kind of want to clean up the animations if we keep unmounting and mounting the component. Okay, so that's good. I can then remove this. And now, like I said, I'm gonna have my timeline, which is equal to the gsap.timeline. Inside of that timeline, I have a scroll trigger. Inside of that scroll trigger, I'm gonna have a target. That target needs a container. So I need to create here a reference. I'm gonna call it container is equal to the use ref hook from React. And I'll just import that here. And then the target will be the container.current and it will be the container here. So ref container, that's the element that I'm gonna track inside of the viewport. And then it's gonna have a start. So we know we want to start to track the elements when they appear in the screen. So it's gonna be at the top of the container. So we know it's top here. And then the second value is the viewport. 
And so it's going to be at the bottom of the viewport. And so now we have top bottom and that's basically an intersection. So the intersection of the top of the container and the bottom of the window. And then the end point, when do we want to stop tracking the elements? It's going to be at this point here, which is the end of the container of that container, the end of it, and then the start of the window. So it's going to be the bottom and top. And then lastly, I'm going to add scrub true. And then I can add my first animation. I'm going to do timeline.2 and I'm going to choose the parallax here, the title for the first element. So I'm going to create a ref and I'm going to call it title. And here I create the title ref, gsub2, the title. And I'm going to do y minus 50. And I'm going to add zero here for the timeline just to say that it needs to happen at the same time as the other animations that I'll create. And then I have an error. It says gsub is not defined. So I simply need to import gsub from gsub. And I'll also need to import the scroll trigger from gsub scroll trigger, which is an external plugin. So I need to import it. And another thing that I need to do is do gsub.register plugin and I'm going to register the scroll trigger plugin. Now I'm going to save this and we can see what we have. I'm going to scroll and you're going to see that my parallax here, my title is moving faster than the rest. And you can see that the gap here is like widening, right? And if I change that value to something like crazier, you're going to see that my parallax now title has a parallax effect. So very cool. I'm going to put it back to 50. And now let's say I want to animate every single character of that with GSAP, I want to have a different value for every single character. How can I do that? First thing, I'm going to create a characters array. It's going to be equal to a use ref. And here it's going to be an array. And then I want to fill that array with every single character that I have here. And so once I have my array here, I'm going to go down and in the word split function here, I'm returning all of the characters. So here I can have the ref is going to be equal to a function which has the ref as a parameter. And here I can fill the characters.current of the index of the current character is equal to that ref. So that's basically a very clean way of filling our ref characters with all of the single character. And so to add a GSAP animation to them, I can go inside of my context and I'm going to have a loop. So I can do characters.current dot for each. And here I have a function, I have access to the single character. And here I can add a two animation to the timeline and I can grab the character and I'm going to change the top property. So the reason why I'm not doing Y is because it's a span and we cannot do transform on a span. So I'm just going to change the top value and I can do minus 300 just to test and zero on the timeline which means this is all going to happen at the same time as this. I can save and we now have something like this. We can see that all of our characters are getting parallaxed at the same time with a value of minus 300. So that's pretty good. But now what if I wanted to look like the demo and be like all separated with different values? How can I do that? It's going to be pretty simple. I can have here a top value, which is going to be equal to math.floor of math.random and I can multiply by let's say minus 75 and then here I can do minus 25. And what that means is this is going to generate me a number between minus 25 and minus 75. And so I can use that top value as the top inside of the timeline too. I can save this and now I have all of my words being animated and it's actually a random value. So every time I refresh, it's going to look different. So maybe you, you don't want to do it like that for like your portfolio or for a production app. Maybe you want to have like an array like this with specific values, maybe minus 50, like something like this. And then you can use that array instead of doing like a random number. But for this example, it's going to work fine. And yeah, we have something like this. So now we animated the title and all of the characters here. And now how can we animate the three images? Well, it's going to be the same concept. So yeah, for the images, I'm going to do the same thing. Const images is equal to a ref with an array inside of it. And I can do images ref. And then I'm going to do the same thing as I did here, but for the images, and it's going to be the images ref instead. So yeah, that's pretty good. And then here, instead of looping all of the images, I'm just going to add a parallax on the small images and I'm going to leave the big one as it is. So to do that, I can simply do timeline dot two and I can do images ref dot current and I can grab the first image and give it a value of Y minus 150 and then zero on the timeline. And I'll copy paste, do the same thing for the third image. And I'm going to do minus 225, something like that. And I can save and there you go. We have a parallax effect. You can see that those images are not moving at the same speed as the big one. And same thing for the title here. And yeah, that was it for the implementation with GSAP.
All right, so how can we do a parallax animation using frame of motion? This is basically the way I do it and the way I think most people do it because it's really simple. There's not a million way of doing it. We're gonna use the use scroll hook and we're gonna grab the y progress from it. And so the y progress will be a value between zero and one, depending on the progress of basically the container inside of the window. And then there's an offset and the offset is basically the same thing as GSAP. It's the start and the end. It's basically the same thing, but they used a different term for it, which is the same term as the intersection observer API. And so this is the start and end start. And so this is an intersection of the start of the container and the end of the window. And this is another intersection of the end of the container and the start of the window. This is a bit abstract to understand like this, but when I'll go in the code, it's gonna make a lot more sense. So once we have that scroll wire progress, which is a value between zero and one, we can then use the use transform hook, which is another hook from Fermo Motion, and we can transform that value, that is a value between zero and one, into another value that's gonna be a value between zero and minus 50. And so once the scroll wire progress is zero, it's gonna be zero. Once it's one, it's gonna be minus 50, and it's gonna take all of the values in between those two numbers. And so that's basically how we can create a parallax using firm motion. So I'll go inside of the code and you can see exactly how we can make this. So in my opinion, you're gonna see if you watch the GSAP implementation, that it's much cleaner in my opinion. We don't have to use a layout effect or a cleanup because this is declarative, which is the same as React. React is also declarative. And so they both align more naturally in my opinion. So like I said here, the first thing I wanna do is initialize a scroll wipe progress using the use scroll hook. So I'm gonna have a const scroll wipe progress is equal to the use scroll hook from firm motion. And inside of it, I need to specify a target, which is what is the element that I wanna track inside of the window? And that's gonna be a container. I'm gonna initialize it as a ref, and I'm just gonna import the use ref from React. And then I can grab the container, give it to my main parent, and then I can give it to the target. And I don't need to specify that it's current here because firm motion assumes that it's a ref. And then I need to specify an offset and so it's basically two intersections that defines the start of the tracking and the end of the tracking. And so the first one is gonna be the top of the container here, this point, and the end of the window. So I can do start of the container and end of the window. And then the end point is gonna be that point around here, the bottom of the container, the end of the container, and the top of the window. So it's gonna be the end of the container and the start of the window. And so with that, we effectively have a value between zero and one that tracks our container inside of the window. And then I can transform that value by using the use transform hook. So I can have a small parallax, which is gonna be equal to the use transform hook. And I'm gonna transform my scroll wire progress, which is a value between zero and one into a new value, a value between zero and minus 50. And then the small here, is a motion value, it's not a number. And so to actually use it, I need to specify motion in front of my H1 here, for example, and then I'm just gonna import motion from firm motion. And then I can specify a style and change the Y and put the small parallax. And I'm gonna save that. And let's see if this is working. I'm gonna scroll and we can see that the title here is not moving at the same speed as the rest. And I can make it crazier by doing like minus 250. And yeah, you can see that it's working pretty good. So I'm gonna leave it at minus 50 and I'll create two more values, a medium and a large parallax. And I can basically do simple like that. And so now I have those three values that I can use across all of my elements inside of my component. But now I want to have a random parallax for my characters here. I don't wanna use a fixed value like I just defined up here. So what I can do is to copy that and I'm gonna define a new parallax inside of the loop. So it's gonna be a new value for every single letter. And now instead of having a fixed value, I can create here a random value. And to create that, I can do math.floor of math.random multiplied by minus 75, minus 25. So that's a value between minus 25 and minus 75. And so now that value here is a random parallax that we can use as a styling here for the Y value. And then we just and then we just add the motion. Oh yeah, and I forgot the Y cannot be used for a span because this is gonna create a transform and we cannot transform the span. And so I'm just gonna do top 
instead and this should work and we can try this out and we can see that all of our characters here are being animated at random and if i refresh it's going to be different value so that looks pretty good and now the last elements are those three images and i basically want to have two unique values for those two small images and i don't want them to be random but right now i have a loop so how can i define a specific value for only the second and the third image right and to do that we basically go back inside of the images array here and i'm going to transform that array to be instead an array of object and every single object will have a source which will be picture one and etc for the three of them so picture one two and three and then it will also have a parallax value and so i'm going to declare that here and so now i have access to those values here so i can do parallax and i can do the first image no parallax the second image a medium parallax and the third image a large parallax and then i go back inside of my map function and here instead of just having the source i now have the source and a parallax and so i can add the motion tag in front of the div the style and i can change the y to be the parallax i can save that and let's try this and you can see that my two images here have a parallax effect they are moving at a different speed compared to the background image here so yeah that's basically it for frame motion and with that i went over how to make a parallax effect with frame motion and with gsap let me know in the comments which implementation you prefer personally i like frame motion but gsap is also clean and a lot of people prefer that over frame motion so let me know your preference and i'll see you in the next one bye